Today is Friday, June 15th, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On today's show, we get an important summer pet safety information from Animal Control, mark our calendars for two awesome kid events at the HYCC this weekend, and learn more about funding a public art project on the walkway to the sea. First, a look at today's weather. Fickle weather, now it's spring again. Mainly overcast skies through the first half of the day, with a few sprinkles or brief showers possible. As we move through the afternoon hours and into the evening, drier air will take hold and lead to some late day clearing. Cool temperatures in the low 60s. But summer returns for two solid weekend days in the high 70s to middle 80s. Hit the beach, it's gonna be beautiful. Let's start with some news you can use. Cape Cod students who receive free or reduced lunch during the school year will be able to get free meals throughout the summer beginning Saturday. The Summer Food Service program ensures that low-income children continue to receive a nutritious breakfast and lunch when school is not in session during the summer months. Children receive full meals comprised of all five food groups including whole grain, dairy, meats and protein, and fruits and vegetables. Their program is offered at five open sites where families can walk in and receive a free meal without having to meet free or reduced income requirements. Open sites are located at Baby Center in Hyannis for lunch from 11 a.m. to noon, Cape Cod Family Resource Center in Hyannis for lunch from noon to 1.30 p.m., Cromwell Court Apartment Complex in Hyannis for breakfast from 8.15 to 9 a.m. and lunch from 12.15 to 1.30 p.m. and Sturgis Library in Barnstable for lunch from 11.45 to 1.15. To find a site near you, mealsforkids.org. Animal Control Officer Charlie Lewis joined us in studio to teach us about summertime pet safety in vehicles and keeping Fido calm during fireworks. Well, the weather certainly feels like summer has arrived, and with that are some really big things that you need to remember with animals. Uh, with me today, we have Charlie Lewis. Charlie, we got a lot to talk about with the weather and with the things that happen in summertime with our animals, right? Correct. All right, so first off, it's way too hot to have an animal in a car. Yes, it is. Um, it, number one, it's against the rules and regulations in the Commonwealth of Mass, and people now have the right to make their own determination whether a dog is in trouble or not. And they can actually break the window and take the dog out. They have to first search for an owner. If they don't succeed in finding someone and they really feel that dog is in trouble, they call the police department, and then they break the window and take it out. But they must stand by until a police officer arrives or animal control. And we take possession of the dog. And what we're going to do is bring it to the veterinarian. Even if we feel there is no need to, we will take and transport it there just to cover and make sure everything is okay. Now, animal control, police officer, or a firefighter can break the window and remove a dog as well. We tend not to do that. We'll call one of the um, Rescue people, uh, fire department wise, they have a little tool that we can hopefully open the door with, or we call uh, one of the local contractors that tow cars, and they can open the door as well. We try not to break a window, but I can tell you that if the dog is really in distress, that will happen because you have to get that dog out and get it treatment right away. Um, right. We've had, in the past few weeks even, an individual that has been coming through town has three or four cats in the car and a dog and appears to be living out of the car. And, you know, it's, it's an accident waiting to happen, unfortunately. Right. So uh, let's talk about the temperatures of a car. So, you know, most people think that, oh, it's the 60s or 70s, I'll leave a window open and that should be fine, the dog will be fine. But that's not true, is it? No, in fact, most of the heat doesn't come from above. It comes from the asphalt parking lot. If you parked on blue stone or, or stone dust, it may be a little bit differently, but when you go into a parking lot, you're talking serious. If it's 75 degrees out, the parking lot generally is between 115 and 125. We have a digital thermometer that we take temperatures with. We can shoot through the open space of the window and determine the interior temperature 
we can take and compare that to the parking lot in the sky, um, et cetera. But generally speaking, in the first 15 minutes, the temperature's going to go up somewhere between 15 and 20 degrees, maybe as much as 25. If uh, it's 95 out, in 10 minutes, it'll be 114 in that car. In 30 minutes, 130 degrees average. So, you know, on the Cape here, we probably say we get an average of 75. When it's really warm, we get 80, 85. So it doesn't take long. And even if that vehicle is in what many consider to be shade, it doesn't make any difference. The sun, the more glass in the car, the faster it heats up from, from above. Okay. Everything comes from the bottom about the same. Okay. So. so, best advice? Leave your pet at home. Right. I wouldn't leave a cat in a, in a car, even though they're going to curl up and be right in the sunshine. They love it. I would not do it because they'll overheat. As far as a dog goes, I wouldn't leave a dog in a car for a couple of big reasons besides the temperature factor. But because everybody loves animals, and dogs in particular, they want to stick their hand in and pet the dog. And we've had people that are bitten by doing that. Uh, just a few days ago, an individual was reaching into the back of a car where the hatch was open. And the dog was tied inside the car. They got too close, and boom, they got bit in the face. Mm. No fault of anybody's, right. you know, but it does happen. And, and I just suggest that most of the time, dogs are better off at home. Um, Temperature-wise, and even when it's cold, same same thing applies. Same thing applies. And there's also another real danger to specifically dogs at this time of year. Um, fireworks are illegal in the state of Massachusetts, but we tend to have some firework-happy neighbors and uh, <coughs> people having parties. What's the mix between fireworks and dogs? They don't mix. Very seldom does a dog appreciate firecrackers. And uh, the more, like the strings of them, when you do that, they probably react even more so. Uh, a lot of dog bites this time of year because of fireworks. Very innocent, you know, bystander gets bit by the dog because of it. I recommend that you put the dog in the basement when we have the big fireworks around town. You know, they have them out on the sandwich line from uh, the golf course out there. So people in that neighborhood, they should put the dog in the basement or put them in the bathroom where it's not going to be as confined. And usually that's in the center of a house. It's not an outside wall. Yeah. So the noise tends to be a little bit easier on them. Uh, but I always put my dog in the basement. It's cooler, and plus the noise is, is quite less. Um, neighbors are going to fire up. The crack is off. There's very little we can do to stop that. Right. And another thing that we've noticed out there, too, is that dogs are out and about when these fireworks start going off, and they get incredibly scared and can run if they're not um, uh, tethered anywhere or even slip their collars. That, is, that happens frequently as well. Right. Uh, it's a very good point. I really recommend putting a collar on so that you can put one finger underneath of it and have a short leash this time of year. I walk my dog on a very short leash. Uh, odd part of the year, I'm on a 18 foot, say, when I'm out in the woods and uh, about. But when I'm walking this time of year, I use a short. Um, we have Father's Day car show coming up on Main Street in Hyannis this weekend. And um, again, short leash. Uh, it's very, going to be very hot. The pavement is warm. Um, we'll have the young people, you know, being pushed in the carriages and what have you. And dogs generally don't mix with that type of uh, temperature. Sure. So you have to be really, really careful. Short right. leash. Short leash, and uh, you know, they kind of do like that cool house, and uh, uh, you know, they might need some time away from us every now and again, too. <laughs> and the other uh, point I would make is that we should always carry water for them as well. You know, we stop, we get a, a you know, some people get a soda, some may get a beer, or, uh, you know, water, what have you. But we should bring water for our pet, too, if we're going to walk Main Street in any distances at all. Exactly. Uh, when I walk in the conservation area this time of year, I have a bottle of water for the dog. Great point. 
Talking about conservation uh, areas, uh, you ran into a situation today uh, just before you got here with a, a baby fawn. Somebody called and says that it looked like it was all alone, but tell us, Charlie, was the fawn really alone? No. No, fawns, when a doe has a fawn, drops a fawn, they come back. They leave because they don't want other wildlife to know where that, where that fawn is. They will be alone all day long. Deer generally go at night more so than during the day, but the mother may visit, may not. Uh, they go in, they feed, and they leave. They do not hang around with their young. Okay. And it's all by nature. It's perfectly normal. And if a human happens to come across a fawn, leave it right alone. You can call us. We'll mark where it is. We'll kind of keep an eye from a distance, but we want to leave that animal all by itself. The mother will come back to it. Now, obviously, if there's an animal, that, a deer that's been hit on the road, right. that may change the picture a little bit. But uh, this time of year, we don't tend to see as many deer strikes. Right. So at this point in time, when you see those babies, mom's just out there making sure that nobody else knows where that fawn is and just leave them be. Nature pretty much knows what they're doing, don't they? Yes, they do. They cover the story much better than we can. Excellent. Thanks, Charlie. Okay. Barnstable Recreation Program Coordinator George Noonan has all the fun details for the father-daughter dance on Friday and the fun afternoon activities for the bike rodeo on Saturday. Hyannis Youth and Community Center is the place to be this weekend. It's Friday, so it must be time for Barnstable Rec. With me today, George Noonan, Program Coordinator, two really cool events at HYCC. George, welcome. Thanks for having me. So this weekend, we've got some, let's see here, Friday night. What's this weekend? Oh, yeah, Dad's Day. Yep, Friday night, father-daughter dance at the HYCC from 630 to 830. Okay. Um, it's a luau theme this year, our first year ever time doing a theme for the event. We used to do, you know, just straight father-daughter dance. But, you know, after my last one, I saw the dads getting a little too, a little warm in there. <laughs> Ties were coming off, you know, shirts were getting unbuttoned. I'm like, well, maybe I can think of something a little more laid back, a little more casual for fathers. So I thought, why not a luau? Right. So, yeah. So what can um, uh, fathers and daughters expect? Uh, so time, you said already, but yep. when they get there, what's, what really happens at a, at a father-daughter dance? Well, let me just say one thing first. Sure. Um, it's not just, just for fathers and daughters. If okay. there's any male relative that would like to take a little girl to this dance, they're more than welcome to come. Oh, so sweet. please don't be afraid if you're not a father. If you're, I'm a stepfather myself, so I know. If you're a stepfather, you're an uncle, a grandfather, whoever it is, you're, always, you're all welcome to come. Um, when you come, we're going to give you your Hawaiian lei to wear. Uh, we'll take a picture of you and your daughter or significant date for the evening. Uh, we'll have some hors d'oeuvres and snacks set up for you to eat. We're going to have a DJ spinning some tunes. We'll play some games with the kids, you know, some limbo, a little freeze dance, things like that. We'll have a good time with them. And just, you know, just let them spend a little time together just as the two of them. So. Right. And that's important, too, as, as, you know, kids grow, little girls grow up really quick, don't they? Yes. <laughs> it's very important, you know, especially to have a night where it's just maybe you and that male role model in your life. You know, sometimes, you know. Moms and daughters always seem to be able to hang out and do stuff together, so it's nice for the dads or, or the male role models to have a chance to do something on, the, with, on their own with them. That's fantastic. And again, that's on Friday night? Friday night, 6.30, HYCC Gymnasium. Fantastic. It'll yeah. be a wonderful, wonderful evening and a oh, great yeah. start to Father's Day weekend. Absolutely. You got that and the car show on Sunday. I mean, you know, and it's supposed to be a beautiful weather. But between the two, we might have a little another event at HYCC that you know we're going to talk about. Yeah, so. what's that event? I I'm thinking, you know, giddy up. Well, we have a great partnership with Mass DOT and the Kiwanis Club of Hyannis. Thank you, Brian Morrison. You're awesome as always. Uh, we'll be hosting our bike rodeo, our annual bike rodeo at the HYCC in the parking lot on Saturday. I think it's the 16th. Yes, yeah, that's the yep. date. From 11 to 1. Okay, it's a free event. We ask you if you want to come down. Sea Sports, Jeff and Andy Craddock, awesome people. They're bringing their staff down to uh, do.
do inspections on bikes and small services, servicing bikes, checking chains, checking seats, checking brakes, stuff like that, and doing repairs. We're going to do some bike safety exercises with the kids. We'll have like an obstacle course, a couple, couple games, a couple activities going on. Um, High-end fires coming down with an ambulance and some, some of the guys to keep, you know, to have to keep the kids acclimated what what the fire department does in situations. Um, Barnesville Police will be there. Again, Brian Morrison, the mayor, he's everywhere. <laughs> um, so he'll be down there helping us out. Uh, we'll do activities. We're also doing as part of it, we have a summer food program we do there at the HYCC, and that kickoff event is part of the bike rodeo. So we'll be doing free lunches for the kids that come down, so free food for the kids, bike rodeos. We're going to give away a couple bikes we have that wow. you know, someone actually donated to the facility, so we're going to give away a couple bikes. We have 40 free helmets we're going to give away to people, so uh, stickers. It's, it, it's cool. Mass DOT will be there. They're helping out with it as well. Music, we're just light, fun activities. Right. And when we talk about kids and bikes, um, you know, this is the time of year that they're everywhere. Um, and, may, so and they should be. Right. You know, I mean, I mean, I came in today and it's like 75 and sunny outside. The weekend's supposed to be beautiful. And we want these kids out on the road, but we want these kids to be safe and smart, wear their helmets, you know, um, and just be involved. I mean, you know, I know that we live in a technological age and a lot of kids' activities are this or, you know, playing Xbox, but, you know, some of my best memories growing up were on my bike and riding to places like right. Katua Kettleers games or to the coop to buy baseball cards or something like that, but, right. so we just want those kids, we want the kids today to have those same experiences. Right, and to be safe doing and it. And to be safe doing it, yes. Right, so that event runs, it's a short time. Short, so 11 you know. to 1, it's a quick hit, so, you know, you can still hit the beach afterwards or, you know, if you get a baseball game in the morning, come to right. that. Go to your game, come to that, take off. I mean, you don't have to be there the whole time. You can just even give 45 minutes to an hour there, great, and then on your way. Right. And we did have a couple of notes for folks that the National Sunfish Regatta is this weekend down at Veterans Beach area. Yep. Yeah, so could be a little traffic issues down there, so be aware of that when if you're out morning, and about. Morning, late afternoon kind yep. of thing. Yep. And then the other one, which I thought was kind of cool, is the Cape Cod Sprint and Olympic Triathlon is at Craigville Beach on, I believe, Saturday and uh, Saturday morning, but it should be cleared out fairly yes, early. Yes, usually, usually they're in and out of the water pretty quick, so there might be a little, little congestion around Craigville early in the morning, but, you know, it should be gone right. pretty quick. So, they want to sleep in after their father-daughter dance. Yeah, I mean, Skip I'm sure the there's bench. some triathletes right in the, in, in the, at the father-daughter dance. Right. You know, so, but yeah. Excellent. Father's daughter dance on June 15th yep. at 6.30 p.m. at HYCC Gymnasium, yep. transformed into Hawaii. In, into Hawaii. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the bike rodeo on Saturday, yep. 11 to 1. Awesome. Fantastic weekend. Ready to go. Mahalo. Thank you. All right. The Mid-Cape Cod Cultural C Council, a committee at the town of Barnstable, has launched a public art initiative for the walkway to the sea and needs the community's help to reach their fundraising goal. Artist Eric Kaiser tells us more. Connecting Main Street to the waterfront, public art is on the rise in our community and others across the Commonwealth. The Mid-Cape Cultural Council, a council here at the town of Barnstable, is endeavoring to create public art all along the walkway to the sea. With me today, one of the artists, Eric, Eric Kaiser. Kaiser. How are you? Good, good. That's good. Uh, so this uh, art project, we'll get into uh, what the art is. We have a beautiful rendition of it here uh, between us. But first off, tell me a little bit about yourself and your art. My background is in wildfowl carving, which is bird carving. Okay. It's an American art form, as American as jazz and apple pie. and. Um, the Cape is actually one of the epicenters of, of bird carving. Really? Starting with decoys that were used as a utilitarian, it was a folk art, and with the conservation efforts of uh, President Woodrow Wilson back in 1917-18, uh, 
uh, conservation laws were signed that eliminated the market for decoy makers, making pieces out of wood, and they became decorative carvers, and that's what I do. What I do is not only an art form, but it's almost more a technical scientific art, too, as because they're actually models of uh, highly accurate models, which are textured and painted to be quite realistic. Wow. So as this type of artist, public art, I, I don't think a lot of folks understand really what public art is. There's uh, been a resurgence of it over the years. It's not just a statue that sits in the middle of the sidewalk. Public art is meant to engage people and to let them kind of uh, explore different types of art. Uh, this particular project, why did you get involved in this? I thought it would be fun to give a little bit back to my town. It's certainly not an, an income producing project for me. Um, and, and it would be just fun to try something a little different to see how public art works. I've only done a few museum projects and that sort of thing. But as far as going through the whole process of the town and the government structures and the funding and all that goes on, I thought it'd be a learning experience. And this, of course, can't be made out of wood since it's an outdoor sculpture, so I'm going to get involved in uh, casting this in bronze or stainless steel, still to be determined. Right. And it's just a new experience. Um, not nothing out of my realm, but it's a few little new twists and turns there. And as you get older, y your art becomes more routine every day. It's more of a discipline than as creative as people think it is. Mm. And uh, so this is something a little different. And I had a good idea. This is a sculpture that I've done life-size and miniatures a number of times. And I've simplified this quite a bit. And uh, the reason it's turning is I guess we're going to get into that. Yeah. And we'll explain in a minute. So... Obviously, there were requests for proposals for this particular art project. The Mid-Cape Cultural Council um, had some monies to begin the project. They're now in a fundraising uh, mode to get matching funds for mass development. Um, and we'll talk about that at the end of the show. But you came in with this amazing um, uh, sculpture uh, called Turn, Turn, Turn. So turn, T-U-R-N, turn, T-E-R-N turn to URN. Tell us a little bit of, of, of the idea and obviously you've, you've put a lot of work into the model as, as well. What this isn't a lot of work for me. This <laughs> is a quickie. That's a quickie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me how you, you came up with this idea and what you expect people to interact with. What I want people to interact with uh, the most is, well, first of all, the reason we did this is to make something not only to enhance the uh, walkway, but also to be fun and to bring more people down there. We're talking about Azelton Park, which is south of South Street, across the street from Town Hall, as you go Caddy Corner. You'd be walking between the Armory and Geyer Barn on the right, and uh, uh, the Maritime Museum on the left, and you go down to this beautiful spot towards the lobster pots, and if you kept going, you'd go past Wimpy's, or Spanky's, Spanky's yeah. and then on to the artist shanties. So that's where it is. and. Um, we wanted to enhance that experience, and uh, this is one of the three ideas. We also have a, 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 a contemporary sculpture, an abstract, which you can lean on and look through, and another sculpture, which will be sort of a seesaw thing, a lot of fun to deal yeah. with a, the theme-oriented uh, seesaw. Yeah, all towards the, the waterfront and the, the history of right. Hyannis and the harbor. Right. Um, so so how this is a little more formal, except right. the fact that when you walk up to it, you'll be able to push it and make it move into flight. Um, and I think that's kind of neat. It's, it'll be fun to do. It's going to be a big, heavy bronze structure. Right. Usually, you, this is a static sculpture, and here you go, and you end up turning this thing. So right. That's going to give you a sense of empowerment. But the other thing is, and you see this mistake made all the time, is we're dealing with sculpture. Sculpture is meant to be three-dimensional, and I guarantee you can go to almost any major museum, and they have the sculptures pushed back to the wall. And it drives me crazy, because as a sculptor, we try to make something that's beautiful from all angles. Right. If I go slowly, this will change. Especially, this is a color version. That's still to be determined. Yeah. But you'll see the birds completely change. And each perspective, since they're beautiful right. forms in nature, is also another beautiful sculpture in its own right. Yes, I know. I love turns. I love to see them in flight. Uh, they're the so most graceful. beautiful thing in nature, I think. Just yeah. the turn wing is spectacular. Yeah. And the 
com complexity of the structures. It's something else, right? So all of these will be available as, as folks walk down the, um, uh, the walkway to the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be able to interact with each of these. Um, you're working together with two other artists yes. that are, are well known, that are, are members of uh, uh, the community mm -hmm. as well. Slightly different disciplines, right? Slightly different disciplines, it's but I think... Three very different takes on public art. Yeah. So I think this is a great idea. Um, and one of the things that we know of right now is that um, the Mid-Cape Cultural Council is a full-on press to get this funded. Um, they can, anybody can go to their Facebook page and look up how to, to help them fund this project. It is being kind of like what we call crowdsourced right now. So there's the ability for um, Massachusetts development to fund half of this if they meet their crowdsourced goal, mm -hmm. which I think is a great way to have the public get involved and then have some state funds and um, some town funds come in and, and actually make this a reality. Mm -hmm. Um, so anything else you want to kind of talk about a little bit on this project? Uh, I just, I love when I was on the Mid-Cape Cultural Council as a board member, I really loved this sculpture. I just thought this was, especially the interactive piece of it, um, mm -hmm. you know, showing the birds in flight was Well, amazing. the engineering is going to be quite a lot of fun, and I found, the, I found the bearings involved and everything and a lot of the materials, but of course we'll have to work through with the town engineer and uh, right. how do we make this uh, resistant to graffiti and are people going to sit on it and is it <laughs> safe and <laughs> lots and lots of things to think about and it's, right. a, it's a fun part of the puzzle which is a lot right. of fun about making art is figuring out all the little nooks and crannies and the things that need to be done. I mean this this part I do all the time. It's routine for me. I do right. it in my sleep but now with the rest of it a new challenge, more fun and it will be I think quite an attractive uh, piece for the, for the it's in fact if you step back that's about where it's going to be, right. right down over there somewhere. That's where it'll yeah. actually be placed. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for joining us today and telling us a little bit more about your art and about this project. We appreciate it. Thank you. Here's a look at our community calendar. Join Sail Cape Cod at Azelton Park from 12 to 5 p.m. on Saturday, June 16th for the second annual Scoops for Sloops Ice Cream Festival. Enjoy all-you-can-eat ice cream provided by ice cream partners from around Cape Cod. All proceeds benefit Sail Cape Cod and its community and adaptive sailing programs. A father is neither an anchor to hold us back nor a sail to take us there, but a guiding light whose love shows us the way. Author unknown. Happy Father's Day. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.